let's move on to talk about Death of a Gentleman, mm -hmm. the movie, the documentary that you made with Sam Collins. In the book Beyond the Boundary, CLR James asked probably the most probing question in the sport, which is, what do they know of cricket who only cricket know? So if you had to give a slightly extended elevator pitch about the general state of cricket, not the rules of the game, not how the sport is played, but the state of it, the administration, how it's run, what would that elevator pitch sound like? No one's in charge. Is that it? <laughs> That's it. No one's in charge. No one is in charge of this game. It is bumping from crisis to crisis, from problem to problem, occasionally getting things right because it's a magnificent game. And I think you can basically go through the entire history of cricket. I don't think anyone's ever really been in charge of cricket. Um, most of the best things that have ever happened to it are because of the game itself. Most of the worst things that have ever happened to it are because of all the shit things that humanity has thrown at it. Um, and it's managed to overcome because it is such a complex and wonderful sport. But no one is in charge of cricket. And so it is in the state that it is in almost perpetually, almost from day one, uh, it has been this case. I mean, one of my favorite stories is people look back at the amateur, oh, cricket, you know, maybe cricket should be more amateur. All these people, everyone's playing it for money. And it's like, well, one of the most famous sort of amateurs is WG Grace, and he made more money out of cricket than anyone else did. Uh, one of the most famous sort of figures from the amateur era of cricket, from the, the so-called golden era of cricket, is Victor Trumper. And he once went on strike because of a fight with Cricket Australia or ACB as they were at the time, I think. Uh, this game has never been pure. It's always had to deal with class systems, sexism, racism, institutional problems, a lack of management, a lack of government, a private men's club approach to governance, uh, a lack of governance, corruption, um, uh, a lack of forward planning, a lack of cohesion, self-interests. I could go on and on. And yet it's a brilliant sport. And so we keep coming back to it and it's never been run well. Um, and yet it's almost, it's almost built a brilliant um, system outside of that. Uh, and so no one is in charge is the best way of explaining cricket to anyone now of where cricket is going and where cricket has come from. Definitely a very bleak um, elevator pitch. And <laughs> I'm sure cricket fans might not like it. Um, in your movie, Gideon Haig had actually asked another probing question where he had said that, uh, does cricket make money to exist or does it exist to make money? And it's pretty obvious to anyone who watches cricket these days that currently it exists to make a lot of money. And we all know the ideal scenarios, of course, that it should actually make money so that it can exist and also grow. But what I want to check with you is, do you, do you really feel like it's actually possible to completely reform the system? And why I ask that is because it seems like every single system out there in the world today and every institution beyond sport is prone to incentives and is built around money. And it, every time you notice any, in any institution that there's an independent committee that's been formed or any kind of an idealistic framework that's been established, it's always susceptible to power, corruption, and money, of course. And there's always a reversal that happens. It goes through these cycles of changes. So then do you actually think it's possible to completely reform the system? Or do you think just fighting the fight itself and the changes that come along with it, even if they're minor, that in itself makes this fight worth it? So I, uh, probably one of the most famous corruption stories in sport is FIFA, right? Cricket has a much worse governance system than FIFA. It's not as corrupt, but FIFA were growing the game while they were corrupt. FIFA made sure that football got bigger and bigger and bigger. I think that at a certain level where, where cricket's problems are is that, yes, there's no perfect system, and Gideon Hague's comment is completely fair and accurate, but at a certain point, in order to grow the game, cricket has to make more money. Uh, if we want, if we want a bunch of kids from posh schools from Sri Lanka and England and South Africa to play cricket, we can do that, and we can make it. We can make less money from it. If we want kids from Nepal to play, if we want the Thailand women to play, if we want the Brazil if Thailand women beat Bangladesh women today, which is incredible, incredible to think of how much money and resources Bangladesh have. Not comparing them to some of the major teams, but compared to Thailand, um, the Thailand women are good because they're professional. They train and they practice and there's money involved and they get better. Money has to be made, but realistically, without an adequate system, 
without checks and balances, without consequences. So, for instance, when South Africa almost got suspended by the ICC because the government got involved with how the game was being run, didn't happen in India when the Supreme Court was involved. It doesn't happen with Pakistan when Imran Khan can openly um, changes the, how the first class system is because the, uh, against the wishes of the CEO. It doesn't happen when the Sri Lankan government have to sign off on the Sri Lankan men's squad every time they go on a tour. We don't have any system at all in place. It's not even like we have a corrupt system. We have a lack of system in place. We don't even follow our own rules in our sport that we have written down. And so it's worth fighting the fight because it's worth pointing these things out. Every World Cup that we have is rigged, right? And I'm not saying the matches are fixed. What, what is the, one of the most important things in sport? It is the sanctity of the fact that we don't try and cheat the fixtures. We go out of our way to ensure that when we do a draw, that it's fair and balanced, that it's based on rankings, that it's based on... We don't do that in cricket. We make sure that India and Pakistan play each other every time. We're literally rigging the draw for ratings, right? It's, it's a ridiculous situation that cricket has got itself into and is allowed. And I've got no problem with, with, with the, some of these people trying to maximize the money, as long as the money then goes back into developing the game worldwide. Well, I'll tell you what, the ICC has never had more tournaments. They just took a bunch of funding away from associate nations. They've just made it harder for associate nations. So now you've got a bigger World Cup and you're going to have worse associate nations because they're not going to have the same support from the ICC that they had before when they weren't allowed to play in a World Cup. Ridiculous situation. So yeah, you fight the fight because these things have to be said. A lot of the things that myself and Gideon Haig and many other people who write about cricket politics have said over the last couple of years, cricket got away with, right? If people didn't keep moaning about the veto system, we'd still, Australia and England would still have it, right? I'm not saying that this current system is much better than that, but it's better than Australia and England being able to veto anything they don't like, even if they didn't use that. that that's a warp system. Uh, when it comes to voting. So yeah, you fight the good fight and you know that there's never going to be a perfect situation, but you hope that as things come, you you have small little victories. And look, 30 years ago, associate cricket was absolute shit house, right? They were terrible. Now we have associate teams that are test playing nations. We have other ones lining up to play. We have villages in Papua New Guinea. We have four cricket clubs in Namibia good enough to scare some of the major teams. The, you know, we have the Thai women's team, we have the Brazilian women's team, right? We have the Japanese under-19s team. Things are happening in cricket. 